Hi there, it's your girl Z from transvoicelessons.com and in this video we're going to be talking about key vocal function and strength building exercises. This video is intended primarily for vocal underdoers, however these ideas can be used to benefit voices of all proficiency level and background. So first off, before we talk about any vocal skill building exercises, I first want to talk about vocal underdoers. A vocal underdoer is a person with a history of vocal neglect and underuse. Vocal underdoing is more like a behavioral diagnosis. It's saying that you don't use your voice very often, so if you don't use your voice very often or you've had a history of not using it, how can you expect to have some of the basic skills that we need in order to develop our voice where we want to go? We should think of ourselves as vocalists as somewhat like vocal acrobats, vocal athletes. It requires a lot of agility and control to do what we want to do with our voice. So if you're a person who's always shied away from using their voice, we can then expect that it's going to be a little more difficult for you to do what you want with your voice. Here are a few common risk factors and signs that you may be a vocal underdoer. Do you speak less than an hour a day? Does your voice feel quiet, weak, or hushed? Do you have difficulty executing basic vocal functions? Are you a shy or socially withdrawn person? Do your hobbies or passions tend to be more isolating? Did you grow up in a very quiet household? Did you have a period in your life where you didn't use your voice at all? These environments and conditions make it really easy for a person to just miss out on some fundamental vocal skills. These can be thought of as the risk factors for vocal underuse or vocal weakness. Even if you identify with all those, that doesn't mean you're vocally underdeveloped. So here are some signs and symptoms to look for in determining if you are vocally underdeveloped. Do you struggle to project your voice or be heard over a crowd? Does your voice feel shaky? Does your voice feel inconsistent? Does your voice feel like no matter how hard you try to control it, it doesn't seem to do what you want it to do? These are all signs that you may be a vocal underdoer. If you aren't a vocal underdoer, well, that's great. These exercises will still help you as well. If you are a vocal underdoer, I'm glad because now we can help you. It's essential for us to get those vocal underdoers to start using their voice so they can start to build that skill and proficiency in order to execute the functions that they need to execute to change and grow their voice. Now, once again, all of these ideas are gonna be useful for people no matter their vocal proficiency or background, but these have the most utility for vocal underdoers. So now that we've addressed the vocal underdoers listening, let's dive headfirst into some foundational vocal concepts. So today we're gonna to talk about four big exercises or themes or clusters of actions that you can do to strengthen your voice and get you to a more vocally proficient level. Number one, semi-occluded vocal tract exercises, or softies. These sound kind of complex, but in reality, they're quite simple and they're super useful. They can be applied to any other exercise or theme that we're gonna be talking about. So think of these like modifiers that you can use anytime you're practicing. Occlusion is when you block something. Semi-occlusion is when you partially block something. So these are sounds that you make when your vocal tract is partially blocked. These are all examples of softies. Creating this semi-occlusion, it kind of creates a cushioning effect for your voice and it makes it a lot easier for you to produce sound. You can add these softies to any of the following exercises or any vocal exercises that you're already doing. If you really struggle with voice, taking a drinking straw and placing it in a cup of water and trying to sing through that is a really effective method to get started. Here are several different softies arranged by how much cushion they give to your vocal folds. Mm, mm, the straw and water is by far the strongest out of all of these Please do not overlook using semi-occlusion in your practice. There are a whole host of empirically demonstrated benefits with these. They are fantastic for your vocal health, vocal rehabilitation, they stimulate blood flow to the vocal folds, they're great for vocal underusers, and they're amazing to warm up with. 
You can use these while playing with your pitch, while playing with your resonance, while playing with your loudness, while literally doing anything. So let's combine it with some of these other approaches. Concept number two, loudness control and projected speaking. Control of loudness in the voice is a fundamental skill no matter how much of a beginner or an expert you are. One of the biggest issues for vocal underdoers is they misjudge the loudness of their own voice, and in many times they often can't be heard in public situations. When you shy away from using your voice and you're always a little too quiet, this will actually make it harder for you to control other aspects of your voice. So vocal underdoers can actually improve their vocal proficiency just by practicing talking louder. Here's an example of a useful task for vocal underdoers. So I am projecting my voice and talking louder. I'm pretending that I'm speaking to people far away or I'm doing public speaking in a lecture hall. I'm just gonna try to maintain this and talk freely. And just a little bit of this will really help those vocal underdoers strengthen their voice a bit. For more advanced or intermediate vocalists, it's really important to learn to control loudness and volume in your voice. So doing exercises where you shift across your volume range at the same pitch or different pitches can be really, really useful. Here are some examples of explorations involving change in volume. Ah, 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 ah. There's one particularly famous historical exercise called Mesa de Voce, and this basically means to stay at one pitch while getting gradually louder and then returning softer, like so. difficult and very rewarding exercise that everyone can practice. Also, sharply shifting between degrees of loudness can be useful. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You can also play with the timing of loudness changes. Ah, 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 ah. Consider playing with loudness with different resonance structures as well, and definitely don't overwork yourself. Give yourself breaks and never work past the point of fatigue and try to avoid working up to fatigue. Whether you are just a beginner, whether you're an underdoer, or whether you're a vocal power user, playing with loudness changes is a fundamental part of vocal exercise. Concept number three, pitch control. Pitch control is a fundamental skill of voice, and it should be practiced by beginners and experts alike. To exercise this control, we use a variety of different pitch changes across our vocal range with different times and intensities. Now you can call these pitch sirens or pitch wobbles or whatever you wanna call them, but basically you're gonna to wanna to go from low pitches to high pitches. Most vocal underdoers find they have very, very small vocal ranges. These are also great warmups for vocalists of any proficiency level. There's a lot of different ways you can do these. You can do really broad and slow ones. Ah. You can do really fast and wide ones. Ah. You can do very narrow wobbles like that. You can even go up and down very slowly while wobbling up and down sort of across that path, right? These all train different coordinations and different functions, and they're all useful for different purposes. It's especially great practice to combine some of those softies with these pitch wobbles and pitch sirens. So yeah, definitely include some form of pitch modulation in your practice, in your warm-up, in your vocal strengthening exercise routine. Concept number four, stable and sustained sound. As a general principle, we should always strive for the most stable and consistent sounds that we can produce. 
So naturally, you should always strive for a stable and consistent sound in any previous exercises or explorations. We can also practice this specifically by working towards longer sustains and increasingly more stable sounds. Oftentimes, vocal underdoers can only sustain for two to five seconds, right? We should at least be able to sustain a sound for anywhere between 10 to 20 seconds. Now, of course, I don't want you to get too caught up in numbers because depending on how heavy you are, depending on how much closure you have, depending on all these other factors, you will find that your sustain changes. But generally speaking, we should be able to support and sustain a sound for a medium length of time. Developing this ability can really address some key weaknesses that vocal underdoers experience. So yeah, treat this less like an exercise and more like a concept. And to go along with that, when you're trying to sustain for as long as you can, the goal is to be as steady, smooth, and fluid as possible. You don't want a lot of jittering. You don't want, ah, you know, a little wobbling or anything like that. You're trying to keep it really stable and really smooth and sustained. Here are some examples. Did you hear where it started to flutter? Like I noticed that and then I tried to avoid it. And that's one of the goals of practicing these kinds of approaches. And of course, like everything else, you can combine these with softies. So I could do something like, and I'll stop there so I don't have to waste any time in this video, but practice on sustaining it in a stable and clear way for increasingly longer periods of time and play with different combinations. Lastly, the summary. So in summary, vocal function exercises are a class of actions you can do with your voice to rehabilitate, redevelop, and strengthen your vocal capacity. These can be used by advanced vocalists or beginners, and they are especially useful for vocal underdoers to redevelop the strength they lost through vocal atrophy. Being aware of semi-occlusion or softies can be a useful modifier for any of the exercises, and it can often make things more useful in the long run. Primarily, vocal function exercises are going to involve some exploration of pitch control, like sirens or pitch wobbles, visiting the whole vocal range, of loudness control, getting quieter and louder while trying to do different functions, and practice involving increasing stability and increasing sustain. These are the key pillars of vocal function, and they can be used to increase our proficiency and to redevelop atrophied voices. If you're a vocal underdoer and you're struggling with some of that vocal atrophy, try building yourself a vocal function routine, which consists of doing these exercises or combinations of them anywhere between two to five times a day for three to five minutes. Never overexert yourself. Don't push past fatigue. Really listen to your body and try to get in touch with your voice. This will naturally develop greater connections and reduce the atrophy that you've experienced from vocal underuse. Here's another example voice building routine from Dr. James Thomas for vocal underdoers. For advanced voices, use these as warm-ups and use them as ways to improve the foundational blocks of vocal sound production. The key to mastery is to go deeper than you ever thought possible with the most basic functions of the process. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please post down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video if you found it helpful. If you'd like to support the work that we're doing on this channel and platform, please check us out on Patreon. If you'd like to work together in private or group lessons, just check out our website at transvoicelessons.com. And otherwise, have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye.